How are you, yep. Senator? I am doing terrific. What the running. actual hell? You're going to have to leave. Steven Crowder is a self-styled comedian. Because that's bullshit! Bill Cosby says that being declared a sexually violent predator is going to damage his reputation. Not available for comment were all the women that he raped. But he ran away. Hold on to your <laughs> Things will get Those guys are dicks. Nailed it! I disagree. Would you like to change my mind? Wouldn't it be great if men didn't rape? Yeah. <laughs> Hello, this is Canada. Turn green up, Canada! Time to listen up, you silly liberal fruitcakes. Get triggered. All right, you of them! You tell them Crowder's coming and hell's coming with me, you hear? Hell's coming with me! Yeah, yeah! Ha ha! Make some noise, you of them! Come show them some love! Welcome to Ladder with Crowder! All you gangsters and free speech thugs, show them hands, let me see them mugs. Hey now, welcome to Detroit City, I said welcome to Detroit City. Every place, everywhere we go, yeah they bitch trying to ban our show. But it's going down in Detroit City, louder with Crowder in Detroit City. Ooh, uh, Ann Arbor's, uh, it's not really the same. Like, what y'all mean? Like, well, like, they don't really like to be they associated. They don't like to be associated with Detroit. Not at all. Yeah, okay, but isn't it like, yeah. like a suburb, yo? No, no, no they're not, not really. that way. I mean, they, they, they have like their own zip code. 734, I yeah, believe, exactly, right? Exactly, yeah, exactly, yeah. I mean, it, it's really kind of its own... Uh... It's kind of its own thing. <laughs> I guess I had the wrong zip code, but we coming now to do our show. Said, welcome to Ann Arbor City. It's not Detroit, it's Ann Arbor City. Yeah, yeah, that does yeah, yeah, that. that, that really is, I know, I, know. I, no, I, I know. I'm just, it's Detroit's two syllables. Ann Arbor is I see. three. It's uh, just, yeah, I'm, it's two. It's, it's hard. Only two. It's only two. Just, I see the problem. A2. Yeah, 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 all the locals, they call it yeah. A2. Yeah, I mean, that's right. I mean, it's like Ann Arbor, that's two. So it's A2. <laughs> <laughs> Hey now, welcome to A2 City. I said welcome to A2 City. Every place, everywhere we go. Yeah, they want try to ban our show. But we here now in A2 City. Louder with Crowder in A2 City. Click, click, boom, it's the zone as I hit the room. You can hear me holler more club in this bitch. Let me hear you holler more club in this bitch. Let me hear you holler more club in this bitch. So who you gonna call on when you wanna have a laugh? Tell you that ain't nothing can be funny Gotta apologize now like a motherfucking bunk Dick curtains off at the power center now From a two trick trick quick come and show off Bring the mugs come join the club buy them out front Trigger punks off in this bitch being an odd junk cause they jumps And we may have to let their ass off Now uh don't it seem a little fishy And I don't like the way these trainers keep screaming at me But you all damn gets me It's it boys what up the way I see your water tower Yeah I see it all up looking like a penis Come on you all damn See them hands in the sky, free speech in and over till we die. All you gangsters and free speech thugs, throw them hands and we show them mugs. Hey now, welcome to A2 City. I said welcome to A2 City. Every place, everywhere we go. Yeah, they want try to ban our show. But we here now in A2 City. Louder with Crowder in A2 City. I'm the track as a producer, I'm a quarter black. I think it's time to hear where I'm a quarter n at. Oh, oh, no, no, no. What the f is wrong with you? Dude, don't do the hard R. Dude, don't go hard R. It's A2. It's A2, bro. It's A2. We out of the of them. Put your mugs in the air for Steven Crowder!
Seven MAGA helmets. Oh, you know. Oh, yeah. University of Michigan, glad to be here. All right, and let's uh, let's let them hear you in the overflow room. They couldn't get tickets, but they're waiting there. Pier yeah. Point Commons, what is it? Yeah. I don't know. Pier Point know Commons. Them. Woo, woo, woo! Yeah, man. They're like, we don't love them that much. Oh, well, you know. Uh, for people watching on YouTube, <laughs> you guys can grab a seat. You don't have to stand this whole time. Yeah. <laughs> what are down. you, the by aliens? I'm not. <laughs> oh man. I'm not going to be passing around a cup. Everybody passes out after this. You can sit. It makes me very yeah. uncomfortable. <laughs> if you stay standing like that, it gives the protesters every reason to show up, okay? Uh, we are streaming live. Question, obviously, oh, not yeah. only to you guys, but everyone out there on YouTube. Obviously, a lot of talk about bombs lately. No one here supports that, I'm pretty no. sure. Uh, unfortunately, the blame game is being played. You've seen this from Donald Trump's rhetoric to the media. What do you think? You think the blameless uh, rests squarely in the shoulders of the guy who, who sent the bomb, or people, or Z's? I don't know. Yeah, uh, never know. You never also, know. if you're on YouTube, a very popular answer is, uh, quote, the Jews. So that's yeah. always, yeah. You can't get around it. You cannot get around it on the YouTube. Hey, everyone, really quickly, let me see your phones. Show your phones. We have some press here tonight in Ann Arbor. Woo there you go. Thank you. What I want you to do yeah. is grab some pictures, Instagram, whatever you want to do. Crowder U of M takeover is the hashtag. Let the press know that you are every bit as much the press hey, as they yeah. are today, that you will cover this story. Woo-woo! <laughs> and uh, we have a promo code, U of M. We you do. get $30 yeah. off Mug Club if you join up. Bladderscatter.com slash Mug Club. For people who don't know, if any Mug Clubbers Ooh. in the house, yeah. Yeah. And uh, we'll be talking a little bit later, a dive-in segment, I think they call it now, we always called it a meat segment about uh, college yeah. conservatism. The statistics might surprise you, but leading the news, we have to talk about this first President Trump held a rally in Wisconsin where he addressed yeah. the, uh, the recent bomb scares. You guys might have seen this. He called for unity, which I thought was, was pretty nice. Uh, many, of course, are immediately accusing him of very quickly pivoting to attacking his political opponents rather than actually unifying. And, uh, given oh, his course. speech, I, you, you know, we have an exclusive clip. You, you be the judge. We want all sides to come together in peace and harmony. We could do it. Even lying Ted, crazy Bernie, Focahontas, she could do it. And even that lying, filthy whore Hillary Clinton, she could do it. No. Yeah. Mm. No, he doesn't have the hang of it yet. <laughs> Don't encourage his behavior. Wait, hold on. I'm actually receiving word that we have uh, right now. We do. Right now we have breaking we footage of the caravan, of course, yep. you know, with migrant children and women seeking a better life yeah. here in the United States. Uh, we go now live to some coverage. Yeah, give me one second. The criminals is everywhere, okay? Uh, cr it's criminals in here. For, I mean, it is. Right. That I mean, almost yeah. seems the opposite of yeah, what I told you. I would say you. so. I would say so. It's almost like I lied to you. <laughs> I make no apologies. Uh, turning to international news, my home country of Canada, where I was raised. Uh, All right. Uh, I love. I love how the one woo was immediately boo. <laughs> no. Down. Shame. We're conservatives. We believe in shame. <laughs> so turning to international news, Canada has already nearly run out of marijuana immediately after legalizing it. Oh. Um, there you go. Yeah. There you go. And, uh... What? No! No! Yeah. No! Oh, yeah, no. baby! Woo! Come on. Gotta have the wine of the day, Stephen. Come Ladies on, Ladies and gentlemen, man. Gerald Morgan, Jr., at G. Morgan, Jr. White glove service and everything. What is this? What's the wine of the day? Perfect. Four. Can you stop with the tea time cabernet. music for crying out loud? <laughs> hey, I thought it fit. I thought He's it already fit. embarrassed little, enough. He's little, him. A little Cabernet Sauvignon. Cabernet sure, Sauvignon. Sauvignon only just a, here, just yeah. a little oh, bit. Oh, whoa, whoa, come on. It. You said. Wow. Oh. Rules change when you're on a college campus, I guess. Yeah, no, this is grape juice. We had to make sure that we uh, oh, yeah. called that. Yeah. By the way, That's everyone, true. give a round of applause to your campus police here. You've been doing a fantastic Woo. job. <laughs> yeah. And you never want to speak ill of anyone in blue, but, you know, unlike those sons of bitches at University of Illinois who wouldn't even show up. Thank you, you oh. man. We appreciate it. <laughs> That's right, baby. Woo! All right, you already stepped on one joke. Grab a seat. Okay. This is what I do for the show. Let's try this again. Too cute Maddie on overlays, by the way. She's, isn't she just, she's too cute. It makes me want to throw up. 
No, no, don't encourage I'm it. I'm throwing up right now. She needs to age a little bit. She needs to feel some shame, make some bad decisions, then we can have her on our team. Yeah. Uh, I threw up in my mouth. She's just too cute. Look at that. It's like, I'm in Cobra Kai? <laughs> Damn it, too cute, Maddie. Okay, okay, turning to international news, Canada nearly ran out of marijuana immediately after legalizing it. Thank you, too cute, Maddie. A direct quote. Problem started on the first day, really? said Patrick Wallace. Wow. It's a mess. Wow. The supply is just a mess. He's the owner of a 420 store. And many of you may not know this. Gerald knows this because he played football at Notre Dame and, you know, spent a lot of time here in away games. Uh, come on. Uh. <laughs> Worse pandering than Hillary Clinton's hot sauce. No, if they win, that's Quick, our victory better. better. And stab her with a pan. Hot sauce, hot sauce, hot sauce. Go blue. It's like a bird. <laughs> oh come on. Now I know why Hillary Clinton does it. Now I know why she does it. She's like a bald <laughs> eagle in an oil spill. Just hot sauce, hot sauce. Uh, and many of you may not know, but he knows because he played it. I love also, by the way, that Notre Dame didn't get as big of a boo as the one person from Canada. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, baby. It's like Notre Dame, ah, boo, Canada, boo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it still is, kind of. Uh, all right, so many of you may not know this. You do because you played a lot of away games here in Ann Arbor. Actually, yeah. Canada followed the municipality of Ann Arbor's lead really? on marijuana laws, which, wow. let's uh, be honest, given the Canadian Prime Minister, really shouldn't surprise anybody here. <laughs> yeah, Mr. City Commissioner. Yes, I'm happy to say that Canada definitely did follow on Arbor's lead. Mm -hmm. oh, I, I can hear you. Yeah, it seems to be working out really well. Listen, let me ask you. Do you find that when people are completely ripped uh, in Dearborn, they don't even notice the Muslim rape? <laughs> All right, that's yeah. That's that's. Oh no! Come on. <laughs> okay, that's enough. Okay. Yeah, sorry. He's a horrible world leader. I should have yeah. cut it earlier. I, I do appreciate it. though the laugh at the uh, Dearborn uh, Islamic rape joke, so that'll go yeah, far. Fantastic. Yeah. Tells yeah. me the kind of crowd you are. Yeah. Canada gets a boo. That gets a. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Oh. They should probably get rid of that camera in his office, by the way. That's yeah. very helpful. And by the way, listen, I do want to, seriously talking about, what's your opinion here on the, on the, the bombs that have gone out recently? I don't this know. Is obviously the, we don't have a lot of info yet, and I don't know yeah. how many of you watch the show, but we typically don't comment on situations where there isn't a ton of info, because you always, om, yeah. almost always end up being embarrassed. Right. Oh yeah, you gotta wait. You gotta yeah. wait for yeah. the info. So Gerald, you go ahead. You, you, take, you definitely have to wait to get some more information, but I, look, if, if it's somebody from our political standpoint, and they think that's the way that we're going to advance our agenda, that's not gonna work. Our right. ideas can stand for themselves. The Democrats and the liberals cannot. I we agree. We don't have to do that. There we go. Oh. Thank you, yeah. Gerald. Get the hell out of here. Get out of here. I, you're paying for that entire bottle. Yeah, this guy, I'm putting retainer. it on your tab tonight. And let him, let him hear you, by the way. They say uh, people like us don't exist. They talk about the alt-right and crazy conservatives. Let him, by, by round of applause, who here is against bombs, no matter who it is, whether it's the Clintons, the Obamas? Right. We don't want anyone on the other side getting hurt. Um, Except Robert De Niro, maybe a little bit. A little bit. Not a just, lot. Just like someone just a like nailed him a mousetrap, like snap. Hey, was that a mousetrap for me? Mm -hmm. like, yeah, it was for you. <laughs> you haven't done good work since Cape Fear, you. Hey. <laughs> um, switching to entertainment, kind of. Caitlyn Jenner said that he, she, z. Um, yeah. I'm just trying to make sure that I get everybody offended right off the bat. You wants it. You got it. to play a Marvel villain. This comes from ComicBook.com. Direct quote. I want to, oh, stop. <laughs> yeah. Save it for Canada. Whoa. No, 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 seriously, seriously. Save it for Canada or DC, okay? Let's, yep. Aquaman talks to fish. Quote hey. from comicbook.com. I, I want to play the baddest ass lady you've ever seen in your life. I got the wicked queen or the wicked lady just to do the makeup on the outfit, and I've got the deep voice. Well, you've got part of that, right? <laughs> So, uh, quick to oblige, of course, and jump on the LGBTQ bandwagon. Marvel actually announced their newest supervillain in the Marvel Universe to be Caitlyn Jenner. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. That seems, yeah. Yeah, I, I can see it. I see it. I can see it. Yeah. I mean, I'd watch it. I'd watch, yeah. I wouldn't. 
I, I would hope you'd have to go through I'd the swinging doors to see that motion picture. Now, Caleb's story arc actually, this is a true story, remains a little bit of a mystery, but because of Comic-Con yeah. leaks, I don't know any big comic book fans here, yeah. there's some Comic-Con leaks, suggest Caitlin's involvement in the newly announced uh, plotline Thanos, the intergalactic transphobe, so that seems <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. almost uh, hate, like it was hate, written yeah. for Caitlin. I hate to, I hate really. to interrupt. No! Damn it, no! Get it, no. Get out of here. Why? No, 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 no. Why? the bathroom. Do you know where the bathroom is back there? It's you don't dark. get one. It's in it's my dark. green room. Really, what I came out to say is go blue, baby! There's a bucket out back. What the heck? By the way, Caitlyn Jenner has uh, the power of supersonic speed, telekinesis, and the ability to not go to jail when she runs you over with her car. So that's a good one. Ah. It's just as good as flying. <laughs> I don't know why. It, it sounds like a cross of Kevin Spacey and the Joker from the animated series. I have a penis. <laughs> Oh, by the way, I, I forgot to tell you guys this. We are actually honored tonight to be joined yes, we are. Uh, by a Supreme Court justice in the audience. Uh, we don't have Somewhere to necessarily agree with this person, but uh, none other than Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Justice, yeah. uh, do we have the Ruth we cam do. available? Do, yeah. Ruth Here Bader Ginsburg, yeah, let's... Oh, hey, shh, shh. hey, 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 shh, shh, shh. All right. She's sleeping. Quiet. Guys, shush. Everyone be quiet, please. This is... <laughs> Thank God you didn't pay for this show. Be respectful. Um, <laughs> By the way, finally, in, in, in the, the final news story, before we get to, uh, to some more news that we have to get to, uh, PETA has officially claimed cow's milk to be a symbol of white supremacy. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to make sure I get this right. The group renewed its claim from a 2017 blog post titled, Cow's Milk is the Perfect Drink for White Supremacists. We tweeted a link out recently, this last week, to renew it. I guess that's how it works. The yeah, National Dairy Association responded uh, to the claims, calling them absurd and insulting, yeah. naturally. Now, though, to be fair, Here's the, I'm a milk guy. Yeah, I, I like milk. I'm a milk I guy, milk. I'm not on board with PETA, but I can see how they could argue that the recent Got Milk campaigns were distasteful. I can understand them, yeah. Ah, ah. That's... Makes sense, I get it. That's dipping into it. gray territory, it would seem. <laughs> Do we have that, can we bring that back up? What was, it? what was the writing? Did anyone see if that was German? What is it, great? Heidi Milch? I don't even know. I don't know, that's how the mustache started. I can't read it, I can't read it. Oh, by the way, we're actually, we're getting word of developments uh, with the caravan we are. We carrying are. migrant women and children, as you know, to the United States. We return to coverage live. It's criminals in here, I mean, it All is. Right, I think okay. that's, yeah. He doesn't seem like he's much help. Hey, one accurate. thing it's accurate, though. I did want to tell you guys, I'm really sorry. Uh, you saw in the posters, my good friend Owen Benjamin yeah. was supposed to be here tonight, but he couldn't make it because yeah. he had a family affair to, um, to a... Ladies and gentlemen, Owen Benjamin! Well now, 
Owen, I just wanted to thank you for that wonderful performance you put on for these folks. Yeah. Yes. Well, I think that showed, Owen, from your passionate performance all the way to your perfect Liberace costume. Now, Owen, have you been following this unfortunate story of the administration wanting to reclassify one's gender to identify with their biological sex? No. See, gender exists outside the realm of science. Well, Owen, gender actually exists outside that simple binary you refer to as boy and girl. It also exists outside of that feedback. You see, actually, gender can be expressed in a multitude of ways. You can be L, G, B, T, there's 57 others, depending on the day, and you can switch right back, including your sexuality, thanks to the modern phenomenon known as gender fluidity. Oh, so it's like magic. <laughs> well, Owen, in a way, in a way, I suppose it is like magic. But let me tell you, it's not always easy for trannies out there on the range. No, Owen, I'm talking about difficulties that far exceed the silliness of cutting off one's peck or replacing it with a non-functioning vagina that your body will forevermore try to close as a wound. I'm talking about problems for trannies out on the range that live more in the realm of nuance. Matter of fact, let me tell you a story about a little tranny I knew. Let me tell you a story about this tranny named Sue. <laughs> Doctor said it's a boy, but pissing off doctors gave Mama joy, so she put me in a dress and high heeled shoes. Yeehaw! Go, Pa thought it wrong, cause I still had a dong, and he said little boys shouldn't wear little girl thongs. Oh, life wasn't easy for little tranny named Sue. What happened next? Dee-hoo! About junior high, I stopped being a guy, and if kids had asked why, I'd let out a big sigh. And I'd just have the school give them the boot. Yeah, you did. Well, college got better, though I still had my pecker. I sure was one hell of a trendsetter. Free to drop a deuce in the men's or ladies' room. Yeah, you pinch that deuce anywhere you want, Sue. I had to apply for a Susan B. loan, even though I still had a bone. But what do you know? It turns out I was approved. I didn't hear that because I was hearing feet. That, that, my hat, hat was falling off. Your hat falling off? Right into my own eyeballs. I'll tell you what, Cowboy Liberace, that's a weird combo. Let's play me back in. They threw in even more scholarship money, and they just asked me, please don't sue us, honey. Oh, life wasn't easy for a little tranny named Sue. Did you sue him, Sue? Your name is Sue. I feel like that's kind of hilarious if you sued him. And you're All right, listen, okay, that's, that's just... Let's curb that. Sorry, I got really I excited. I appreciate the zeal, but it's making up my, my hat's about to fall off. All right, let's just slow it down. Let's play me back in. Well, a man told me late one night after 15 Bud Lights disregarding my height. Hey, you sure are good looking, Sue. You. Now I said just between us, I might have a penis, though it's more of a weenus, and he let out a gas with my big old size, 15 shoe. Damn, that's a big shoe, Sue. Well, wouldn't you know, as I began to disrobe and I started to probe, turns out he's a transphobe. Ah, oh, hell, what's a poor tranny to do? He screamed, you're a man, dragged me back his Dodge Ram, all just because I didn't have a clam. Oh, life wasn't easy for a little tranny named Sue. So what'd you do, Sue? What happens next? Years 
went by, I had my own little guy, and I knew I'd have to choose how he'd identify. And oh boy, I didn't know what to do. Well, hormone blockers weren't the answer. As it turned out, I gave the little bastard cancer. Life won't be easy for a second generation tranny named Sue. Biology's a bitch. Owen Benjamin, ladies and gentlemen, huge pianist. By the way, Johnny Boy, my producer, he's rushing to try and get us back on track. Let's hear it for him. Get him. Yeah. <laughs> and he still screwed it up. Oh, man. I uh, hope you're having a good time, everyone out there. Why am I still doing this? Yeah, cut that, cut that out. I, I need some more it. wine. <laughs> <sighs> oh, and I want to own back right now. i got to find out where I am. So how many here uh, would declare themselves conservative, libertarian, right wing? Yeah. Uh, all right, I was hoping for a little more diversity. Oh, wait, by the, I forgot. You know what? We actually still have... We do. In our midst, we do want to check back in on Supreme yep. Court justice. Do we have the Ruth Cam? Ruth Bader Ginsburg, ladies and gentlemen. Is she, is she here? Oh. She's... <laughs> all right, you know what? Let's check back on that. Let's just... Yeah. That yeah. might be in the Q&A. Oh, goodness. Um... You know, we hear this talked about a whole lot. You've heard this term probably from many of your professors who are out there protesting. Uh, othered, right? Who here has heard yeah. the term about othered? Uh, okay, apparently no one. <laughs> we will not make a noise unless it's booing a Canadian, okay? <laughs> Everything else. And we hear a lot about this, right? We hear a lot about black people, gay people, trans people, about being othered, about being marginalized. And, and, and here's the truth. I, I, statistic, <laughs> one person's cheering with a glow stick. <laughs> Looks like a mid-90s rave, and he's taking a cocktail of codeine and E. <laughs> like, yes! I'm out, I'm out. I've been othered <laughs> with seven fingers. You and Trudeau would make a cute couple, sir. Um, <laughs> But statistically, the one thing that a lot of people don't talk about is no one has been othered. No one has been othered on college campuses more than conservatives. Now, before we get to the statistics, let's show some stories that you probably know. Let's show the anecdotal. Here's a reel. Also, a group of conservative students kicked off their campus coffee shop for wearing Make America Great hats again. I don't want people like you supporting this club. Well, then you should include no that. No one cares about people like I want to I want to White supremacist and a vice president that is uh, one of the most anti-gay uh, humans in this uh, country. At this point, it's not even education anymore. It's indoctrination. And we begin with the legal battle that is brewing. A student group claims it was ousted by Lone Star College over its conservative views. Now it's taking college leadership to court. The piece at the University of Alaska Anchorage depicting Captain America holding the president's severed head. He was told he had to apologize in front of the class, stand silently while they critiqued him. Uh, she didn't like the fact that I disagreed with the subject being pushed in class, being um, more than one gender. Hey, by the way, please give it up for Yaf and College Republicans who put this on for you against the administration. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> give it up. Yeah, let him hear you. And the overflow room, thank you guys and everyone who's already been given tickets to the after party. We appreciate it so much. You guys have been so accommodating. And I don't know if you know this, but actually, this very show, before it went, it actually started out of a station here named Wham! in Ann Arbor. That was the first show I ever actually had to call my own. Good. A couple of people. Good. We're up at 6 a.m. Yeah, you know. And you were probably 12 years old. There's a lot of Trudeaus out there. So does anyone know the actual number as far a lot? Because people talk about this a lot, right? People, and you don't want to be folks who just bitch and you're not armed with information. Does anyone know the actual number of professors on college campus? They, they out, well, let's, you, that's good. That's a good guess. But I think you just picked the lowest of the numbers. <laughs> the zero, zero, can I pick that? Zero is not a number. One, one, one percent. <laughs> Do I get a t-shirt? No. <laughs> the, the ratio of leftist to conservative professors across this country. Do you have any idea? Well, now you kind of, you stole my thunder. Okay, all right, it's, not, it's 12 to 1. All right, so sorry. Like 20 to 1, a million to 1. It's 12 to 1, which I thought was pretty bad. 
And here's something that's crazy to me. 39% of colleges across the country have zero. No conservative professors at all. We have there's an overlay there, uh, too cute Maddie. Yeah, look, she's so cute, makes me disgusted. <laughs> so basically, 40% of universities and college campuses have no, even leaning right, professors. At what point do we acknowledge that it's not just happenstance? Let me ask you this. Can you find 40% of college professors, can you find 40% of colleges that have no, zero, not one atheist professor? No Buddhist professors, no environmentalist professors. Can you find me 40% of colleges that don't have a single professor who likes Jolly Ranchers? If you're playing the odds game, there's this, this statistically, doesn't matter how many times you roll the dice, zero, that's almost half. And by the way, the majority of college students, how many people agree with this? When poll, the majority of college students, and by the way, the poll really matters here because you're asking people's opinion. It's not like a poll on healthcare from Bernie Sanders. Are you happy with your healthcare, you son of a bitch? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's all right. Proof positive, America sucks! <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm a... Not as bad as, was it, uh, Alexandria, Nina, Pinta, Santa yeah, Maria, Cortez? One of those. Yeah, one of those valley words. Larry, Curly, Moe, Cortez. I can't get the names right. But is it because it's Latino? Yes. No. But let's go with that. I don't, I don't have time yeah, to argue I'll with you. With Just it. call me a racist and I'll be on my way. Let's do that. <laughs> you ever have that now? Where someone's like, what, are you a racist? Like, ah. Sure. Sure, yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> I I'll just want it. an Whatever. extra fire Whatever. sauce. I don't want to have a conversation at the drive-thru here. <laughs> a majority of college students say that they feel there's a climate on campus that's completely hostile toward them. Anyone else? Show of hands, a round of applause. I can't see you. Feel that way on campus? There's a few. And, and, and here's the thing. It, it, it would be what, yeah, you're not alone. Right? A big part of why we do this show, a big part of why sometimes we go a little bit too far with the jokes, and I know some of you tomorrow will be telling your, you'll be like Peter before the roost crows three times. I didn't go to the lottery <laughs> with Crowder Show. <laughs> and your local paper is going to be like, okay, he has a Christ complex. <laughs> but we do it so that you don't have to be afraid. It's okay to be who you are. We hear that all the time. You're perfect just the way you are. First off, none of you are perfect. Most of you suck. All of us suck, okay? I suck. I suck. I suck, you suck, Gerald certainly sucks. But what? And, but that's okay. But then we're told you're, you're, fi you're, you're fine, just accept yourself for who you are. Well, what if you're a conservative? What if you're a right-leaning person on campus where you're outnumbered 12 to, 12 to 1, not by students, but by your professors? Where 40% of you are on a college campus with not one person who shares your worldview? That's how it deter... Well, I, let's not go with burn it down, all right? <laughs> That's the guy sending clock boy envelopes. I'd check him out. Not a good plan. Not a good plan. How funny would that be if it were just clock boy? He's like, oh, we'll fool you again. <laughs> it's Maybe Bernie this Sanders. time I'll be invited to Chamber of Commerce, then back to Qatar. <laughs> I suck as a person. <laughs> and David Hogg's like, I heard suck as a person? All right, listen. <laughs> He's 18, it's fine. He's 18, it's fine. Yeah, you can do it now. It's on, it's on time. Did you see David Hogg try to encourage Canadians to commit election fraud? <laughs> um, I was like, no, even Michael Moore was like, give me the microphone. <laughs> and here's one thing, it's one thing for professors to be all far left and all of your students to be far left. And it's one thing for you to be afraid simply, simply to speak out. And that is the norm, right? A lot of people have accepted that as the new norm. But it gets even worse when you look at today, and we're not supposed to use the M word, M as in marsupial people out there, okay? You're not supposed to use the M word when we're talking about mobs. But the truth is, on campus, and we've experienced this, as well as at, in the country at large, the left today, these people, who make up 40% of college campuses, but there's not a single one of you teaching, these people who outnumber other professors 12 to one are getting increasingly violent and rioting. And you see it escalating. Here, don't take my word for it. clothes and hard tactics and I don't think they'll know what hit them because they're not prepared for what we're planning. Here, you're going to take the knife. How much of a... Yeah, I'm going to get two AKs coming.
Others wore masks, threw what appeared to be fireworks and smoke bombs, then started fires. There have been no immediate reports of arrests. Hmm. None. None. Doesn't that strike you as weird? And I know we're not supposed to use the M word today, but I say it because, listen, guys, I'm, I know it's kind of hard to say something serious here with my package hanging out. <laughs> Do as I do, not as I say. You know, just do none of it. But honestly, and before we get to the Q&A here, we're gonna line up, I say this so that all of you out there, you see these mobs, you see people pulling folks from cars in Portland, old man trying to beat him up. I don't know if you saw this video, it just made my blood absolutely boil. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be afraid to speak up. It's why my answers have changed yeah. in the Q&A when I used to say, listen, keep your head down and stay safe. It's why my worldview has changed because they will smell it on you. You cannot hide it. And that's why we're out here. This is really hard. Give it up for the team of people who've made this happen too, by the way. There's an entire staff. Can we get a mic with a longer cord? I don't know if that's possible. The entire staff made this happen because we want to come out and just let you guys know that there are other people out there like you. They may not be your teachers. They may not be your friends in college. They may not be the people writing the papers about today's, uh, about today's event. But you know what? They are out there. And before we move on to Q&A, uh, I think we do actually have to go one more time to um, our, if we have, or Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, uh, the Ruth Cam. Yeah, the Ruth Cam. Are we? Oh. Oh, what? Oh, no. I You bastard! Ruth Bader Ginsburg, ladies and gentlemen! Give it up, give it up. She's a fighting one. To pull this. All right, there we go. All right, listen, we're going to let, thank you so much. That's, the, that's it for this material here. We're going to go to the Q&A for you guys. Uh, thank you so much again to the Overflow Room, you guys. You were fantastic. We're going to keep this going. We're going to come visit you after we do this Q&A. Yeah. Let's line up. We have microphones here on the right and on the left. Uh, University of Michigan, anyone who wants to ask a question, feel free to come on up. You can ignore the people who are going to write about you tomorrow in college paper because they're not going to be friendly anyway. And by the way, where's the guy who's dressed up as a mug? Where is he? I saw a guy who's actually, let me hear your chant. All right, there you go. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. Is that a kiddie pool that you just put tape on? There it is, yeah. Hold on a second, let's bring him up first to the, to the mic. I just want to see what he did. Let's hear it for this man. Put out, he's, he's the winner of the costume contest for sure. That's epic. That is so good. Oh, he has to put it on before he goes to Q&A. All right. Oh. And he can't make it down. <laughs> Let me walk sideways. I'm kind of a rook assaulting this thing. <laughs> Shouldn't have chewed so much gum, bitch. <laughs> All right. Don't knock it over. He has to go around and come back. Okay. All right. Maybe this wasn't the best idea. What's your name, sir? Uh, my name's James. James, thank you for being here, James. Yeah. Thank you for the effort. <laughs> now, James, tell me, how did you, what is this that you put together? How did you make this? Uh, I took a couple of cheap yoga mats, a pool noodle, and a hula hoop. Okay. Beautiful. And a, yeah, and it cost Beautiful. you a girlfriend, I'm guessing? <laughs> it might have. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you have to dress this way? Why can't you just be normal? No, I'm telling you afterwards, we can get into the mug, we can do some weird stuff, make some bad decisions. <laughs> gonna, I don't want to be in a mug. That's disgusting. You want to be in my mug. <laughs> if not, you're not a part of my... So, uh, how long did this take you? Uh, I started Sunday morning, and I finished last night. Wow, wow, you're yeah. definitely failing at least a class. Yeah, give it to him. <laughs> this is his moment, better make it count. Thank you so much, sir. I appreciate your Mug Club member. You are the winner of the costume contest. Any merch you want, couple of shirts, Ranger, you want some Ranger panties? You want to wear some Ranger panties? Sure. All right, sure. all of the above. Thank you, sir. Let's hear it for the costume contest winner. Woo! All right, I guess, you know what, we'll start right here. You know, okay, we'll go over here with the next first question. Oh, geez, what happened there? That was like Satan's piss. All right, Lord. you, sir, in the cape, looking very angry. What's your name? Hi, that's just my natural face, but Is thank it you. really? Well, you might want to work on it. All right, go um, to a job interview. I will be thrilled if you choose me. <laughs> sir, are you sure about that? Shut up, I'm finishing. Yeah. So, oh my God. What? Oh, he's on. I think it turned into something that we don't even know what it is. All right, what was your name, sir? Evan. Evan, okay, Evan. Uh, what, so this is a cape? Uh, yeah, I helped set up. This is what we all wore. So. Oh, thank you very much, Evan. I appreciate yeah, no it. I'll wear the cape. So, okay, I'm going to have to stand back so I don't get any feedback. Go ahead with your question, Evan. Cool. So, um, listen, just as a conservative on campus, I yeah. mean, today in one of my classes, 
Um, it was a, a Spanish seminar of all things. We were learning about why Christianity is more violent than Islam. Really? Um, yeah, that's not. Someone tell you that with a straight face? Uh, well, listen. That 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 just brings up my question: Is that as a conservative and like as a Christian, a devout Christian on campus, you know, I am afraid to, you know, speak up in in, in a second language at that. You know, just be like, um. What's your first language? Professor English, but um. <laughs> Well, Aww. first off, I think it would help if you learned the general precept of second language. Okay. But, uh, okay. All right. Well, I'm wasting time. But anyway, my, my question is, yeah. you know... <laughs> Are you sure you want to be a nightclub comic, Evan? Go ahead, sir. I just want you to have some fun. It's okay. Yeah. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Let's, you know, let, let's have fun. Yeah. It's just I find it hard to disagree with the sentiment of just sort of just eating the crap that your professors give you, getting yeah. the grade, and then once you're out of school fighting to make a difference. Yeah. Because I, I find that sentiment rather enticing, honestly, because I understand. Our, our grades are important as students. Of course. And I'm just wondering, do you have any advice for students in my position sure. who want to be able to stop the indoctrination on campus but don't necessarily want our numbers to suffer as right. a result? Well, thank you, Evan. First of all, give Evan a round of applause. Can you give him a smile? Give him a smile. Come on, how about a smile, a pussycat? All right. How about now? Can we smile? Um, by the way, I don't know if there are any Antifa members here. They were threatening to throw a big old bottle of piss at me tonight, so... Target right here. Where are they? Um, I, listen, it's a valid what? question, and I understand it. Okay, and this is a question I get asked most, and we do the life advice segment. We're a tough love with your guru, Dr. Crowder. Yeah. Um, legally, I can't say I'm a doctor, but I'm a doctor. I think, um, first off, I know this sounds trivial. It does help to smile, to be jovial, to be a happy warrior. That's not just something that I'm, you know, Dennis Prager talks about how it's your moral obligation to be happy. And as Christians, we talk about being happy, being content, being at least grateful through suffering, right? That's what I believe, I genuinely do. I feel that it is such a privilege to be able to come out here and perform for you guys and ensure that doors are closed for me in the entertainment industry. And when you talk about it's an enticing idea, right? And oh, and they're definitely closed. Um, well, you also can't walk through half of them. Uh, <laughs> I get that it's an enticing idea, and I used to answer this question, if people go back and watch the older videos where I said, you know what, I understand it, do what you gotta do, keep your head down. The problem is, you would have to believe that all these professors, the 12 to 1, are idiots without Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. There is no way to stay hidden in 2018. That's why I changed my answer. My opinion hasn't changed. If, there were, if you had the ability right, to stay off of social media completely, to be completely Google-proof to every single professor and you could guarantee that they wouldn't know, yeah, listen, sure, go ahead. Ace your classes and then get yourself into some kind of position of authority. Watch the YouTube people and they're like, the Jews! Um, <laughs> and then do more good. But you're not able to do that in 2018. That's why I think it's so important for you to hear the people next to you yelling. So that you know there are this, listen, you guys aren't that small of a minority. You are definitely that small of a minority as it's represented in media, as it's represented in the faculty, as it's represented in the press, but you are not that small of a minority when it comes to people, even when it comes to the student body. You know what you are? You're the students, you're the piece of the pie who elect presidents. How about that? And I'm sorry, but my opinion changed a little bit when we have conservatives who are like, I just want to pass, I want to go into the STEM field, I want to be an engineer. And then Antifa's like, Molotov cocktail number nine, asshole! <laughs> you can't do it, it's not possible, so what I want you to do is grab the phone number or the hand of the person next to you today and go, you know what, all right, here we are. We're in it now. You're in a fight. Anyone here ever been in a fight? You don't stop after you've been punched in the face. You've all been punched in the face. Now, I'm not saying go out and punch them in the face or start mailing clocks, okay? What I am saying is there's no way to hide it. You've been punched in the face. You're in the fight whether you want it or not, so start acting like it because there's no way around it. And you help the person next to you. And I want to come back to that afterwards because I'd like to close on that point. I really do see, and I get a lot of emails regarding fear on campus, and it, it tr truly does. It breaks my heart. I feel totally humbled to be able to come out here and perform for you guys because I know how scary it is. I know how othered you've been. Thank you. Thank you so much. You, sir, with the noise-canceling headphones. What's your name? Uh, Logan. Logan. Nice to meet you, Logan. So, uh, I just kind of two-part. Uh, All right. Finish my second question. Can I get a handshake? Uh, no. Okay. Because <laughs> I don't know you, and Jeff might shoot you. Okay. <laughs> it's very possible. I don't want to get shot. He's almost shot me uh, multiple times. I literally was reading about baggies of piss being thrown at me before coming on stage, and you're like, I got a goatee and spacers in my ears, and I 
canoodle. It's nothing personal, I hope you understand. Yeah, that's fine. All right, go ahead, sir. Uh, so I'm a senior in high school, and me and, me and my friends, we're conservatives. Uh, we all have the conservative views. Okay. I've been getting really into politics in the last couple of years. Yeah. Uh, but my friends don't seem to understand why they're conservative. It's more of like a, they know the conservative way is the better way to go, but they don't really know how to argue their point. They okay. Don't know how to, it, it, so is there really such thing as a bad conservative in that sense that they can't help us push the agenda? They can just state it? Yes. By the way, this guy was looking at his watch and then started tweeting something right here. What were you doing? You were like, oh, this kid better hurry up. I want to get to the after party. Your wife's watching. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. for your. What's your name, sir? Michael. What's your wife's name? Ashley. Ashley, why couldn't Ashley. she be here tonight? Uh, kids. Three kids. Well, let's hear from Michael and Ashley. Yeah. Three children. That's a powerful woman. I sure hope the kids aren't watching tonight. <laughs> Mommy, what's a ranger panty? It's what's barely hiding what's in there, son. Um, <laughs> yes, listen, there can be bad... Here's the thing. It doesn't mean they're bad people, but can there be bad conservatives who are not able to represent the viewpoint properly? Yeah, you see them all the time. <laughs> What's part two? Exactly what I was looking for. Yeah. Oh, is that it? That's All right. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for the question. Yes, it's a simple answer. And I know a lot of the time we like to act as though there is not a simple answer. Sometimes there is a simple answer. And, I, I, and listen, I'm, I'm a relatively smart guy. Like I'm slightly above the belt. What are you, what are you just... It, my, my, my horn's falling off. Oh, your horn's falling off. I keep seeing him doing this. I'm like, what's I, going on here? a gang sign. I just thought you were doing something. Yeah. A gang sign. Listen, the MS-13 are edibles, okay? <laughs> All they do, I walk up, they're fondling, they're fondling their hordes all the time with the fondling the hordes. <laughs> President Trump, I don't think I, was, I think off. that was quarter black Garrett at a lot of those Crowder shows. Shut up, you dumbass. I think they're fondling with the hordes. <laughs> um, so I pre no, listen, there are sometimes really simple answers, and that's okay. And uh, that's why we're going to be releasing the Change My Mind book here, uh, hopefully before the end of the year, a booklet on campus that shouldn't be too much. Um, because sometimes there are simple answers. Not everything lives in the realm of nuance. You know, we were told for a long time, like, well, not everything's black and white. Well, that's true. But not everything requires a soliloquy. Sometimes it's really simple. Are there conservatives who are bad? Or of course there are. You see a lot of them. I had one person once tell me in Canada that, uh, that Chinese people shouldn't be allowed to get home loans. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have anywhere to go with that. I was just like, well, see ya. Okay. <laughs> I'm not on board. I don't even get that. And I don't really think this Makes person sense. meant it. Anyway, I don't know. What's your name, sir? With the, what, no, what's that? Is that a hockey helmet? He is a Polish tank yet from World War II. Polish tank yet from World and War II. Okay. My name is Alex. Thank Alex. you for coming. Thank you for being I, here. I have a quick question. All right. How are babies made and what is the best way to raise babies? Okay. <laughs> Well, let's be honest, that first question's been answered because if you're a heterosexual female or homosexual male here, you now know how babies are made. Um, <laughs> what is the best way to raise babies? Uh, I, listen, I don't have babies, so I know, and I get people like, when are you gonna breed? I'm like, well, first off, I'm not a horse. <laughs> yeah. Uh, secondly, you know, listen, I still got a doggo at home and he needs a lot of care and uh, when we have time. Wait, what are you saying? Uh, well, I don't know what you're saying, I have no idea. Go back to fondling your horns, I'm very confused. <laughs> Uh, I think this is really easy though. I had a great dad. I've talked about this a lot, and I know a lot of people have become conservative in their, uh, in college now, which is great. You see a lot of people, not obviously not just myself, but people like Ben Shapiro, Jordan Peterson, there are a lot of people out there changing hearts and minds right now, where people are going into college not conservative and coming out conservative. I, I will tell you this, I've been around since, uh, I think it was 2006 on YouTube, 2009 is when I was doing political videos, okay? We did these political, it, it would get like a few thousand plays and that was a huge hit back then, right? The Young Turks were calling me out and talking about how much I sucked, right? And now they won't, they will utter any name not named Steven Crowder. <laughs> when you show up to Cenk's speech in Austin as Cenk, that's kind of what happens. That's what happens. And it's bullshit! Um, <laughs> But I will say this, so for, that, that's really heartening. For, that's, that's just, it warms my cockles to see that. Because it tells me that the people who are outnumbered 12 to 1 in staff, the people who are really afraid of the climate on college campus, you are changing hearts and minds. Because when I started out, this didn't exist. This wouldn't be possible for conservatives on campus. We actually, if we'd have been able to book it in advance, could have filled Hill Auditorium with how many people are here. I don't think that there has been any kind of a political show like that in recent memory here. There probably is someone's going to be like, Noam Chomsky, well, shut up, okay? for the purposes of this story. Um, so that's great. That being said, 
I did not become a conservative in college. I will tell you, I, I became a conservative pretty young. Why? Because my dad had these conversations at the dinner table. And I think Ronald Reagan said, all great change starts at the dinner table. And I was just a kid. I was doing this, this cartoon, Arthur. I was PBS. And uh, I played this character called The Brain. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Give it up that for gets the almost as big a cheer as a Canadian gets booed. <laughs> but it was produced in Canada. Now what do you do? <laughs> So, you you so didn't even torn. have to think about it. I'm so torn. Wow, that was so fast. Uh, and I, I would get checks, and my dad would say, okay, what do you think about this going to taxes? What do you think about a 52% marginal tax rate? What do you think about health care, right? We had already put several people on the ground because of Canadian health care. And all of these conversations started with my dad. And I will say this, my dad and my mother, my mom was French-Canadian, and so she didn't understand American politics to the same degree, but she was principled. She was more conservative on the social issues, on the moral issues. And in Quebec, there are only liberals and liberal separatists. But they always had these conversations with me as a young child, to the point where when I went into high school, I was having these conversations with, with teachers long before college. So if you're going to raise your kids anyway, people say, don't talk about religion and politics. Well, guess what happens when you don't talk about religion and politics with your kids? You have kids uh, like the gentleman who asked, I think it was Evan, who asked a question, who's afraid to speak out in college. You think you're emboldening your children if you're telling them don't speak religion and politics? They're going to go into college mortified. Arm those kids. Get them ready with information. Send them out there like little warriors. Don't send clocks, but send them out with info. Thank you, Mr. Polish. Thank you. All right, you, sir. Yes, I appreciate it. You got a, you got a uh, Lyra's Crowder hat. Yep, okay, all right. Go. There you go. Thank you. I appreciate you just bought it now. Oh, very nice. What's your name, sir? Uh, Matt, Traverse City, Michigan. Oh, Traverse City. Very nice. <laughs> Cherries and fat commie assholes come from there. That's Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Not, I mean, yeah. The home of Michael Moore. <laughs> uh, boo. What did someone say? He's not from there? No, he What's is. the story here? Like, right, he's like, he's not from there! <laughs> he's from Leelanau County! <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. Go ahead, what's your question, sir? That leads to my, uh, my question. Um, while the state of Texas is treating you well, would you ever move back to the greatest state in the Union, Michigan? Oh! <laughs> No. That was, that was a Brian Stelter question. That was very leading. It's like, Mr. Trump, would you ever consider being respectful and kissing my ass on air? <laughs> no, you're disgusting. Well, see, I can't talk with him. There's no reasoning. <laughs> Uh, you know what? I would, I would consider it uh, when Michigan ditches their state tax. Here, I hate to say this. <laughs> this is one thing I've talked about I don't understand. We, we, Texas is a great, it's a Petri dish. You know what? Michigan, you've got, let's, let's do, if you could just annex Detroit and Flint, give it to Canada, you know, just like, t just tell them it's on the ballot, they're just voting for free pot and tap water, like, oh, yeah, just, <laughs> that sounds good here in Flint, it's a good deal, I get to get high and dead, um, <laughs> So you have the same kind of situation with Eastern and Western Michigan. You look at Grand Rapids. I did a video, we did this video. Thank you. Any Grand, Grand Rapidians in the house? Yeah. First off, people over there are nice. Um, they really are. They're re oh, geez, for some reason my, my earpiece was, it felt like someone was tugging on the back of my collar. Oh, Steven's done LSD again, kids. Um, people there are nice. I had a guy, we were doing this undercover sting of the college socialists. Um, and this guy was complaining, he's like, yeah, this city sucks, and, you know, the DeVosses and the Van Andels, they just really destroyed this city. And I said, oh, okay, what do you do? He's like, I work for the Van Andels. <laughs> I mean, they really have, you look at Grand Rapids, you compare it to Detroit, you look at one that's expanded, one that's done incredibly well, one that's diversified, one that really was supported by free enterprise, conservative families and households. And that's one thing, too, I think a lot of people here from Michigan were kind of surprised how, anyone here surprised initially at how vicious the attacks on Betsy DeVos were? Yeah, I think almost everyone who's not a piece of crap. Yeah. They're like, Betsy DeVos, isn't she the worst? And everyone in Michigan is like, ah, uh, she like supports kids' hospitals. And um, she's actually made schools better. And they're like, no, we're pretty sure she's a whore. And we're like, okay. <laughs> I don't think that's allowed. Um, so you have it in Eastern Michigan, right? You have entirely democratic rule, Detroit. Listen, I'm sorry. I know some of you hipsters like to go to Detroit and drink coffee. That's not how they live. It doesn't save the city, all right? Sorry. <laughs> Detroit needs to get rid of the crony. The political corruption in Detroit knows no bounds. Uh, you have Detroit, entirely democratic rule since I think Jerome Cavanaugh, 1961. And then you have the other side of the state. Or you have a place like Texas, right? A place like Texas. Woo, woo! 
where it could not grow fast it. enough. People, don't, people can't get their head around this. Texas, okay, it's not really fair to compare countries. Like a good example, people talk about healthcare being a human right and they try to compare us to Norway or Denmark. It is fine. <laughs> Denmark is socialist! The prime minister's like, uh, shut up, we're not socialists. I'm pretty sure you are! Um, it's a lot more fair to compare states. I think, and comparing California or Michigan, but I think California, Texas are great examples. So California is hemorrhaging people, the taxes are awful, their well, economy is collapsing underneath them. According to Al Gore, they shouldn't have even existed, I think, four years ago, but we're, <laughs> we're banking on that climate change at some point. And then you have Texas, right? No state tax and a surplus for as long as I can remember. You figure it out! And then you have these Californians who moved to Texas, right? They moved to Texas because I think, what is it? There's Toyota that left, State yep. Farm, Liberty Mutual, 15,000 yep. jobs in one municipality. I think it's Plano, Frisco, one municipality of Texas. It's a suburb of Dallas. And they come in and they try to vote in the crappy blue policies they left. It's yeah, unreal to me. If you want to talk about the delusions of today's left, just look at Californians today who are chasing their dreams, their jobs, and a better life for their family in Texas and then trying to turn it into California. Good example, very comparable, would be people in a migrant caravan on their way over here burning the American flag! <laughs> oh. I don't know if you're booing me or burning the American flag, but I'll take it. Think about that for a second. And we're told that we're mean. Imagine someone going like, oh, okay, I'm going to come to your place for dinner. Like, all right, fine. By the way, I'm going to take a piece in your cooking pot, okay? <laughs> what is happening? Then Don Lemon's like, you know, you should let them in or you're racist. You're like, why are you just looking like a dead Johnny Mathis back from the dead? You have nothing interesting to say, Don Lemon. <laughs> So, a uh, long way around to say, uh, probably no, not moving back to Michigan, but I do love Michigan. Michigan has unbelievable natural beauty. I love the it people really nice here. Uh, outside of, uh, you know, the people who uh, uh, live in Detroit. Really nice. Um, and uh, I really oh, do yeah. appreciate it. Thank you for your question, sir. All right, uh, we're going to go over here. Oh, mustard. Okay, you're just, is there an inside joke here, or is that just the only costume you had? Uh, my friend's ketchup. Mustard and ketchup, okay. <laughs> I, I love how ketchup is way happier. <laughs> it's because everyone loves him, and with you, they're not so sure. Yeah. Like, ketchup, yes! I put in my fries, and hey, mustard! Get the hell away, mustard. You're like Gerald. All right, but mustard has the question. I couldn't tell if you were mustard or you were, uh, you were uh, Bette Midler and Hocus Pocus with the little hat there going on. <laughs> But an Asian version. Well, are, you, are you Latino? Are you Asian? You can't I mean, both? Indian. Indian. Well, she's got the feathers on her head, so, you know, <laughs> get mad at her. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a dot, not a feather. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is, I kind of knew it, but I was hoping I'd walk into that one. <laughs> I don't really care. You're going through your whole own dot feather thing right now in India, so you shouldn't be one to throw stones or whatever the hell it is you have left in India, but go ahead. Oh, 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 now you're offended? <laughs> He's Indian, he's dressed as mustard, he's laughing his ass off. All right, what's your name, sir? I'm Shane. Shane, nice to meet you, Shane. What's your question, Shane? Uh, so, as a Indian vegan conservative, I'm a, I'm a very independent-minded person, and I just can't comprehend the race card where, like, Oh, the, the whole hierarchy of white people, brown people, this, that, and the other thing. I just don't get it. How do, how do you um, propose that I were to combat that as I go into college and I talk to teachers yeah. and stuff like that? Well, I wouldn't propose you combat it. As a vegan, you might not have the vigor. <laughs> um, Now see, every look, he's laughing. See, this is why it's a fun time to be here. This is some kind of a leftist conversation. Everyone's like, oh my God, I cannot believe he said that to the dot Indian. <laughs> and I can't believe she's dressed like First Nations, but it's really like a red, I just, I am so, I am offended on so many levels. And I don't even think they have mustard in India. Oh my God, now I'm being racist. And he said a Indian, not an Indian. Is he a Mexican who's trying to pass himself off? Um, your question is, how do you help combat that? Yeah. Listen, I think you are. I think you are just being you. That's yeah. it. I mean, here's the truth. We have Eric, Eric Nimmer, our good friend Eric Nimmer on the show, good friend of Owen Benjamin, for people who know him. Uh, former, black, former black military. It's one of my favorite jokes from Eric Nimmer. I think, I don't, I'm butchering it here. He can tell it to the overflow room. Is he served in the military because he wanted white people to thank him for his freedom? <laughs> 
And here's the thing, he's not even that conservative. Nimmer. He's like, I, I, my, all my family, they're all liberals. They're all former Democrats. And they, they, just, they just got so crazy. Now, no one in my family is a Democrat. He's like, but I'm not really a conservative. You don't even have to be a conservative. Just be you. You're, you're, you I mean, you're, you're an Indian, right? Where are you from? What part of India? Gujarat. What's that? My family's from Gujarat, but I'm B born here. Gujarat. Okay, you were born here. Oh, all right. So you want to get past it, but you want to throw it down in the college resume when it's. <laughs> <laughs> He's like Sean King, the victim of a hate crime, but then when he needs to, it's like, I'm going to check the Caucasian box. And Elizabeth Warren's like, where's the Indian one? I mean, made him. Look, I'm smoking a peace pipe. I call my dad Paw Paw. I'm a piece of crap. Um, uh, and you're, so you're an Indian. You're native, Indian, not Native American. You're, that's Native American over there. But your friend Ketchup is positively translucent. <laughs> I mean, his 23 in me shows up, just, it just doesn't even show up. It's like you have to put this in dark mode, invert colors. <laughs> and isn't that fantastic? You two are like a buddy cop film. That's how you answer it. Just don't be afraid. Again, this all goes back to, it's really simple. Listen, the coward's way, way out is really easy. Keep your head down. I used to talk about this because I was in Hollywood and I felt like I had to do it for a long time. You keep your head down, you say the right things, you don't piss off the, 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 all the wrong people and eventually, right, there's that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. It's never there. It's never there. So just do it. Be who you are, where you are. People see you and you say, yeah, by the way, I'm a conservative. You, you watch leftist's head explode, right? Like, Wait, hold on a second. I thought you said you were a dot. <laughs> like, yeah, and I support lower taxes. Oh, so is the dot like a mini Charles Manson swastika? No, you're just a horrible person. Uh, that would be my answer. Be who you are, what you're doing is great. Have fun, be a happy warrior. Just don't be intimidated by people who tell you what you have to be. Because then the problem is too, listen, I make fun of vegans mostly because they can't fight back, but it's okay. It's okay for you to be a vegan. Just take it in stride. And that's what I love about you. I appreciate you asked the question. Just don't be afraid. Thank you so much. We're gonna move on. Woo, gentlemen, right here. Whoa, that is a busy shirt. Is that writing or is that just a pattern? Oh, it's a Hawaiian shirt. Oh, okay, all right. You from Hawaii? <laughs> oh, no, I'm a Hollywood's new favorite socialist. What's that? You're, you're what? Ace Hollywood's Ventura. New oh, okay, I see what you did there. Yes. Yeah, I'm all Ace right. Ventura. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I got it. Okay, I see it now. You know, I didn't see it before. The red pants, the hair. Yeah, you get the hair more. Okay, Ace Ventura. All right, I appreciate it. Was this a last minute costume? I mean, it wasn't quite like the mug oh, guy. No, yeah, it was last minute. Yeah, he's like, it's last minute. So like, you got a tank top and a shirt that kind of, I don't know, more like Jim Carrey? <laughs> That's pretty close. It's not all bad. Right. Okay, what's your name, sir? Uh, Eli. Eli, all right. Eli, we're going Old Testament. What would you like? Uh, what's your question? <laughs> well, Elijah. So, really Old Testament. Oh, wow. oh. all right. There all you right. go. But, uh, my question is uh, so I'm 18, so I don't have to identify with millennials, thank God. Uh, <laughs> Wait, you're 18? You're lucky. Yes, I'm 18. Lucky. So I'm born to Shit, said Kevin Spacey from his cell. Continue. <laughs> I, really, I really hope the Hawaiian shirt could give me an aloha. Stop, stop. Stop clapping. I'm terrible. All right, go ahead. But no, no. So do you have any hope for Gen Z, you know, being more conservative? They've kind of talked about... Oh, absolutely. That. So what do you, what do you see yeah. us doing, or what do we have to do to finally get the country going? So your Generation Z at 18, where does Generation I, Z I start mean, exactly? In 1990-something, you can identify with... I could yeah, it's like 96. Identify. Yeah, no, I know. You can identify like as anything now. I, I identify as a baby yeah, boomer. I identify as a baby boomer. <laughs> I, yeah, I collect Social Security. They're like, what? I'm like, I know I could pick it later and technically get more, but I just want to steal stuff now. They're like, okay. Um, no, listen, this is true, and I appreciate e Eli. Thank you for the question, Eli. This is actually a really important question. Uh, generation Z is possibly the most conservative generation ever. Now, I know, yeah. I mean, you know, that's why they were so busy trying to push David Hogg out. That's a great example. Generation Z is probably more pro-gun than it. Don't boo me. I say it's, it's not like Voldemort, okay? I'm like, say the name, of like, boo! <laughs> and you have less leeway because you're Canadian. <laughs> so, uh, Generation Z is probably more pro-gun than any generation prior. Why? They talk about gun culture 2.0 because you've, you've played these video games where you see these ultra-realistic guns, you want to try them out, shoot them. You're not even necessarily pro-Second Amendment, and then all of a sudden it kind of folds into that. Also tend to be very pro-free speech. And here's something that I've noticed, and I actually think is, is um, I haven't heard a lot of people talk about this, it's entirely a theory, it's conjecture, okay? 
So, wait, hold, please tell me you're dressed as a terrorist. I couldn't see you until just now. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, I came from Palm Palace in Dearborn, huh? What's a little money to Hezbollah? <laughs> Delicious food, by the way. I think there was a place, actually. What was the place that actually was funneling money to Hezbollah? It's Lashish, right. Or possibly all of them. But let's go with Lashish. <laughs> no, it was Lashish. Yes, I remember. And listen, you know, they hate the Jews, but by God, their tabbouleh is tasty. <laughs> um, so Generation Z, uh, there are winning issues. Pro-gun, pro-free speech. They've rejected this sort of pseudo third wave feminism. Uh, there's a lot of progress being made with Generation Z. And this is just kind of a theory that I have. You know, millennials were sort of the last generation to bridge that gap with social media. Right, millennials, when, you, when, when we, and I, I guess technically I'm a millennial at 31. I'm not entirely sure. Um, one person's like, a cheer, and then everyone else booing because I'm still Canadian. I, I get it. I'm going to leave very soon. <laughs> you people are terrible. I'm never coming back to Ann Arbor. Um, no, I'm coming back, absolutely. <laughs> and we're going to sell out Hill Auditorium. <laughs> and then we're going to go up to Torch Lake and take a dump on Michael Moore's dock. <laughs> yeah. Symbolically. Uh, you have to say that now, otherwise people are like, oh, Michael Moore received an envelope. He's pretty sure it's the guy who said he's going to take a dump on his dock. <laughs> um, so we were the last generation, right? When I grew up, we didn't, we didn't have Facebook, we didn't have Twitter, we didn't have Snapchat. The closest thing was later on we had MySpace, and that sort of became like the whorehouse of the internet. Um, <laughs> before that there was Friendster, before that there was Zanga, which was, it was just nothing but, it was nothing but Asians, and, and you know, <laughs> dot Indians were on Zanga. Um, <laughs> We didn't really have it, right? So that's the last generation where, remember, you didn't really get the red pen. Scores had to be evened out because you could insulate those kids. We had kids who were bullied a little bit too much when you go to baby boomers and Generation X, and we, we had sort of, we just tossed them all in a school together, right? We created the Federal Department of Education. Let's say, well, let's see what happens here. Okay, it's not really working out that well. People are getting their asses kicked. Test scores aren't really going up. But then Generation Z, they've been raised now with social media their entire life, which is terrible in a way because the worst things you can possibly read, right, you see on social media. It's toxic. I, it's just like a drug. You really need to keep usage of it absolutely limited. Not today. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Crowder U of M takeover. Yeah. Um, shameless plug. But you can't really hide. And so I don't think professors, I don't think parents are able to insulate Generation Z so much. So you have this generation, right, millennials, who kind of made it to college, who'd been told that they're amazing and they're perfect every way that they were, and none of us are, and they went there, and then there was a reality check in the workplace, and we've seen all kinds of problems with millennials in the workplace, whereas Generation Z have been told the most horrendous thing they could possibly imagine since they could use a smartphone. And so I think that'll have negative ramifications, but again, they have the ability to fact check any bullcrap. Same thing, anything I've said here tonight, right? You can just pull up your phone and be like, oh, he's full of crap there. <laughs> Probably. I have no idea what I say up here half the time. <laughs> um, and that's with Generation Z, and they're very pro-gun, pro-free speech. So I, I actually have a lot of hope for Generation Z. I see far more people who are willing to listen and engage in a conversation because once you cut through the white noise of all the terrible crap being said on social media, you know, we have genera the younger people are always the ones who come up and change my mind and actually want to talk about it. It's the, old, it's the millennials, those people in that gap who are like, ah! <laughs> like, what? And you're like, I don't know, I just want to scream louder so I win. So I really do think the tides are, the pendulum swings the other way, and Generation Z, statistically as well, something else that's undeniable, they are more conservative right now at this point in their lives than baby boomers were. Oh. So right now, a lot of people go, well, they're really not that conservative, they're liberal. Yeah, they're liberal, but that's expected when you're young, but for the first time, we actually have sometimes on certain issues a plurality of Generation Z uh, folks, what do you call them, Generation Zers? Zers? The trans community won again! <laughs> Generation Zers! I never thought of it until now! Damn it, Caitlyn Jenner. Damn. I'm already on the X-Men cover. Go with it. Um, they are more conservative on certain issues than any generation before them at that snapshot in time uh, in their lives. And that's something we don't hear about. It's something to look out for. It's some really good news. And it's also why I want fewer and fewer people to be afraid because Generation Z is not as cowardly as many millennials were. And that really warms my heart. Thank you so much, Eli, for your question. I appreciate it. I gotta go, I gotta go, we gotta go. All right, socialism is for figs, sir. You got a wonderful beard, what's your name? Seth Barber from Grand Rapids. I didn't hear, did you say Sao Paulo from Grand Rapids? <laughs> What's your no, name? Seth Barber. Seth Barber. Oh, you gave me a last name. All right, we're very formal. Okay. Well, quite. Oh, no. no, Sao Paulo was on the mind because I was just talking with Owen Benjamin backstage about <laughs> Snake Island. Anyone remember this, Snake Island? Yeah. <laughs> Dude. 
That's a great, yes, just bomb it. I just, it's off the coast of Sao Paulo. It's like eight square, every single meter, square meter, there's like eight snakes. They have flying snakes. They have snakes that hunt in packs. These snakes only exist on Snake Island. <laughs> but why can't we hunt them? Well, it might disrupt the ecosystem. Do you mean the ecosystem of only Snake Island? <laughs> Nuke it, for crying out loud. Okay, yes, go ahead, Mr. Sao Paulo. Well, this question was straight from my wife. Um, and it's a personal one, so you don't have to answer if you don't want All to. All right. Well, that's a little weird. You're asking your wife's personal question, so do me a favor. Do me a favor. Ask it as a woman. <laughs> I'm going to try. Yeah. Are you planning to have kids? <laughs> like a woman! That was my Christian Bale. If I were, like, mad at you, and like, like a woman! I don't know why. Uh, I, yeah, of course, at some point. But is that the only question from your wife? Well, that was the only question that she wanted to know. Yeah, I know. Well, listen, I mean, it's a loaded gun. I got to be careful with this thing, right? I got to pick my <laughs> spots wisely, especially after this. You know, my wife is, is visiting Michigan, too. She got family here. I'm going to walk back in these assless chaps in ranger panties. And if I don't want kids <laughs> right away, I got to be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Let's take it back a notch. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't, you know, it's a personal question. I can't necessarily answer all the personal questions, but I'll tell you this. I don't like kids. I, I know I'll like, okay, I know I'll like my kids. Like my, I was like, man, dad, I'm really scared. I always thought I was going to want kids. And like kids are just really annoying and <laughs> sticky. And, so, and he's like, ah, I didn't like kids at all. And then I had liked you. I'm like, oh, okay, all right. So no, I like some kids actually. Johnny Boy, who's a producer of mine, his daughter is just adorable. Yeah, she's great. Um, yeah, but she's very, very aggressive for a young girl. <laughs> she's three and she asked me to marry her. And I was like, oh, that's cute. That's like, that's pretty cute. Okay, we don't need to do that. And she's like, now. <laughs> and then she walks up, she grabs me behind the neck. She goes, Steven, Steven, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Like, okay. She goes, you're what I've always dreamed of. <laughs> it's cute. I'm like, first off, we mustn't be afraid to dream a little bigger, love. Second, <laughs> to make situations even more awkward, right, I turned to my friend, uh, Johnny Boy, producer, wonderful uh, man, and I turned to him and he, she goes, you're what I've always dreamed of. And I go, hey, Johnny, just so you know, we're bros. I would never take advantage. <laughs> <laughs> After he peed himself laughing, he had me hauled out in cuffs. So, yeah, uh, eventually. But tell your wife, thank you, and thank you for the yeah. bringing the mug. Yeah. Can I just send her a message real quick? Just to your to wife? The camera? Yeah. All um, right. Hey, honey, I love you. And for the phone number that you put on my mug, thank you. The first three digits is mine, but the last four are yours. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, she's I don't pregnant, know what's so she has pregnant brain. Okay, what's your name? Oh, okay. Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you, Mr. Sao Paulo. I know it's not your name. What time is it? We have to get going. Probably two more questions. Two more. Yeah. Or we're probably about, okay, we have two more questions. Oh, two All right. more. One more? Is that what you just said? Two. Oh, two. All right. Yeah, it's like, like Ann Arbor. Like, like Ann Arbor. Eight. Eight. Two. Let's hear them, Ann Arbor. All right. That was two. I don't, all right, stop yelling. Stop yelling. All right, who thinks they have a really, really good question? The guy up front didn't even raise his hand. He's like, no. <laughs> I, don't want, I don't want this kind of heat. I'm out. All right. I'm out. We're gonna go two more. Okay, since you were here, what's your name, sir? Trevor. Trevor, nice to meet you, Trevor. Okay. Nice to meet you too. What is your question, Trevor? By the way, uh, what's your name, sweetheart, with a, with a full featherhead Indian uh, native outfit here? What's Elizabeth? Oh, Elizabeth. It says Elizabeth Warren on your shirt. Okay, so that's your costume. But what's your real name? Izzy. Izzy. Okay. So you just decided you wanted to walk through this campus right now and piss everybody off on your way to the show tonight. Good for you. Good for you. Woo! Him too. Him too. Let's all be a little bit more like Izzy and that guy. But I'm pretty sure she's cute. He's just a racist. So don't be like that guy. He's the one sending clocks with get her done stickers that look remarkably like ISIS flags. I don't know. Stop asking questions. <laughs> all right. So uh, you've mentioned that the movie The Edge starring Anthony Hopkins. Yes, The Edge! My favorite film. If you have not seen it, The Edge with Anthony Hopkins, Alec Baldwin. It is the single most conservative film ever made. And by the way, the guy who created it, David Mamet, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, is one of the most prolific playwrights ever. He wrote in a New York, uh, New York Times or Washington Post an article, Why I'm No Longer a Brain Dead Liberal. He wrote The Edge before he wrote that article. That's pick, it's, it's proof positive of someone who's a conservative and doesn't know it yet. If you have not seen The Edge, please go rent it. It's unbelievable. It is the perfect motion picture except for one scene where the green screen is kind of obvious with this grizzly bear and you're like, shit, it would have been perfect. So it's like a 9.9, .9. but yes, the edge. Sorry, I get, if we talk about Snake Island or the edge, I'm gonna get jacked. 
Understandable. So right. uh, in the movie, Anthony Hopkins plays a, a rich, powerful uh, man, and uh, Charles. Yes, and uh, you know he's very helpful to the people in the movie. And yeah. Uh, I was wondering why you think uh, in the real world people on the left would vilify someone like that with money, power, even though he's helping people. Right. You mean not named Soros. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, no, I think it's a great, and that's why The Edge, for people who don't, let me give you a little bit of kind of a briefer. The Edge is, a, 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 let me give you a briefing on it. The Edge is really, Anthony Hopkins is this billionaire guy, and he actually, so spoiler alert, he, he starts off as a really good guy, and you're waiting for every single film, right? The billionaire is going to be like, ha, ha, ha. Forest, I've destroyed you forever, and I kicked that kid. Um, the Edge is one of the very few films where the billionaire actually is a good guy who saves bad people, who saves some people who are selfish. And here's one thing: as this is a big, I think, a defining difference between the right and the left. Okay, we talk about this with identity politics. We think it applies only to you know race, mustard, and ketchup, um, but it applies to classes too. Listen, money amplifies character. If you're a terrible person. You're going to be a terrible person with money. If you're a good person, you're going to be a good person with money. And the truth is, typically speaking, we like to be, a lot of people teach us that everyone has to cheat and game the system and lie and screw people to become wealthy. No, to get into D.C., yeah, most of the time, but not, not to run a business. Most business owners in this country, they're paying people. The first people to think about when their head hits the pillow at night, they're employees. When they wake up, when they go to bed, it's the last, it's the last people to think about when they go to bed, it's the first people to think about when they get up. In the edge... Uh, this film, it, it really is an unbelievable film because, again, like I said, David Mamet didn't know that he was a conservative, and he wrote this whole film, and you're waiting for the guy, the billionaire, to be the bad guy, and he never shows up. The good thing is, when we talk about being open-minded, and it's funny, right, they talk about the gender binary. There's no gender binary. We don't, we, not, we don't want to go with science, but when it comes to success, when it comes to finances, when it comes to power, there's good, successful, powerful, strong, and evil, the poor, the downtrodden. Therefore, the good have to give all their crap. But the truth is, sometimes the, the powerful, they got that way by actually doing the right thing. And sometimes someone who's been on food stamps for their entire life, not everyone, some people get a tough break sometimes. Sometimes the guy, though, who's been suckling at the government teat ever since he was a small child is actually just a selfish, lazy person. Not always. And sometimes the guy who makes a ton of money, like a Soros, is not a good person. We don't have to fit into this. It's just so funny that the left tries to act as if they're open-minded. And we're going to... We're going to break out of the gender binary. I am born, right? <laughs> and then you say, yeah. What, a, what, about, like, what about like this idea that wealthy people have to be bad and poor people are altruistic? Son of a bitch, that's the truth. <laughs> and I don't buy it. And I think that's why it's important. I think the left vilifies success. Uh, again, the left automatically grants you the moral high ground. I've talked about this before. And it's a very dangerous mode of thinking. And here's the thing. This is why so many young people are liberals, leftists, and they become more conservative as they get older. So you do ask, what do you do? I do think that's why I say smiling, being empathetic, being nice, having a good time, that changes people. What starts people's change, what starts them on that trajectory is not always, you know, the fact. It's not always just giving them a Thomas Sowell book. It's not talking about marginal tax rates. It's not talking about a GDP that the left said could never possibly happen under Trump. And we're like, ah, oh, shit. It's not that. Sometimes it's how they feel around you. And you have to be the life of the party. You have to be a good person. Because the left grants the moral high ground to people who are the poorest and most downtrodden and automatically assumes that they're correct. The same thing with Israel and Palestine. Look at that. And that's unbelievable. I know we're going to have some libertarians here who are like, false flag! All right, listen. But, or the YouTube people, the Jews! We're back there again. But if you look at Israel and Palestine, you look at some people who tunnel underneath towns to target women and children, and then they defend themselves by hiding in grade schools and mosques, again, around women and children. And Israel builds up an entire, basically a force field to defend who now, who now, who now? They're women and children. The left hates Israel. Look at the charitable. It's un statistically undeniable that the wealthy people in this country, particularly conservative Christians, they tend to give the most to charity. It's not even close. There's a book, I think it was by uh, David Brooks, Who Really Cares, is I think the book, and it talks about this. The single biggest determining factor is their faith and then their political affiliation. And then particularly level of income. Middle income people don't give as much as upper middle income people and not as much as wealthy people. And poor people give less than wealthy people. Now I know you're saying, well, that's just because they're poor, they don't have as much to give as a percentage of their income. That doesn't mean that all poor people are bad. 
It just means that we shouldn't grant them automatically the moral high ground. And that's why you see the left today, it's a prime example. The edge is such a shocker. You watch it, you're like, oh my God, I thought billionaires were always bad. Why? Because the left is trying to sell you that the guy, in, the Antifa guy, dragging an old man from a car and punching him in his face, who's on the way to work to build the crap that that guy punching him in the face probably wants to be stolen from him at gunpoint by the federal government. They want you to side with that guy. Why? Because he's wearing a ripped up hoodie. So he must have the moral high ground. Don't buy it. It's easy to fall into this trap because most people, most people are empathetic. They're sympathetic. They look at people who need a leg up and you say, oh my gosh, you know what? This guy needs, I, I feel for this guy and you want to help them. And the left tells you, well, that's because they were screwed by somebody just like you or someone who's wealthy. It's not true. There are good people who are wealthy and powerful and there are bad people who are poor and weak. There are good people who are strong and there are, that's actually one thing I, I actually just misspoke. There are no bad people who are strong. The only one that you can look at, we're talking about strength of character. There are people who are weak of character and people who are good, people who are strong, people who have backbone, people who have spine. And guess what? Those people can be rich, poor, black, white, yellow, Indian, or Injun. It doesn't matter. They span the spectrum. But the left wants you to think it exists in a binary. Hey, there's that word again. It doesn't. So I think that's why that film was probably one of my favorites. It's shocking to watch. Go watch The Edge and read more David Mamet. All right, last question. I know a few people have said they have really, really, yeah, we gotta get really a good, good questions. Let's get a good one. Hold on a second here. I think you're looking to just make, make some, all right, okay, let's see, let's see, I'm pro-life, change my mind, all right, hat shirt, then we have to get going. All right, what's your name, sir? My, my, name, my name is Matt. What? Oh, but because you dress like a terrorist, I have to answer you? It's what? This, I, oh, he disagrees, all right, well, sorry, you should have gotten up sooner. I, di I disagree with your 40-yard dash. All right. Uh, yeah, let's go. My, my name is Matt, Mr. Carter. I wanted to, uh, first off, I wanted to thank you. I wouldn't have ever watched the Gosnell movie if, I, uh, if you hadn't you know, promoted it on your show. Yeah, that was a really you. great movie. So, um, fantastic film. I took one of my liberal friends and she enjoyed it as well. But hmm. uh, my question is uh, two parts. First off, um, in discussing things with my family, uh, what would you say to the people who uh, accuse you of being an AIDS denier? Uh, I understand that you're, you know, that it's joking when you, when you go out and say that obviously... No, AIDS is a real thing. Right, absolutely. Just don't have group sex but, with trucks, but, there's a truck stop with strangers. But would you agree that heterosexual... Don't use dirty hyperdemic needles, we're good. But would you agree that heterosexual people can get AIDS as well? Do sure, it, sure. It's, they're not it's, AIDS, Sure, yeah, it's a statistical non-risk, but yeah, go ahead, what's part two? Um, part two is, uh, how would you uh, help me shut down all the people who keep asking what happened to Sven Computer? Uh, well, Sven Computer's back in Germany. So you said you had an important question. So uh, he's back in uh, Germany right now. We wish him the best. You know, yeah. that's always kind of complicated. As far as an AIDS denier, I, I don't know where that started. You know, we talked about, oh, I don't know if you remember this. Oprah said one in, fi one in five couples will have AIDS by the year 1994. I think it was 1994 or 1996. That includes heterosexual couples. It's never even been close. I've never denied that AIDS exists. Again, this is what the left does. They take something that's true and you say, the AIDS epidemic was a host was a hoax. I don't know about you, I remember when I was in school and they came in, they said, listen kids, we need to talk about AIDS. And I was like, oh, all right. So you're telling us like, don't have unprotected sex like the people in rent in the East Village or use a bunch of dirty heroin needles and we should be safe, right? Like, no, 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 no. Just if you have a friend who has like a scrape on their knee, don't touch them. And that was how they taught us to avoid AIDS. There was this false epidemic thrust upon the American public that everyone was at risk, and it just wasn't true. So if anyone wants to call that a denier, all right, then I guess I'm an AIDS denier, I guess. I mean, it's one of those things that I don't really care about that much. Um, but it's really bastardized. You see that by the left. We're going to have to go with one more question. I think you said you disagree. Is that it? You disagree? Okay, let's go. And then we'll keep it. One, one last question. Thank you, sir. All right. All right. I, I wanted to know, I had a different question. It was about trans people. I thought that it's not necessarily great to, uh, to make fun of them because it's kind of like punching down. But I wanted to know why you call this a terrorist costume. Because it's funny. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's fair. And I also, that is fair. I also it's a comedy wanted show. I to say the, the whole rape and Hezbollah funding. I think you have a bad perception of Dearborn. I know you had a video there, but I like to extend an invite to come and see how Muslims really live in Dearborn. We don't fund cool. Hezbollah or, or rape people or... Well, I'm glad you don't. Okay. And by the way, I never said everyone funded Hezbollah. Just Lashish, right? Yeah. Well, that's just one guy. I mean, there's 200,000 of us living in the vicinity. I mean, it's just one guy. Sure. I mean, the American government gives money to Saudi Arabia, and they're bombing the hell out of Yemen. That's right. The equivalent of what Hezbollah is. I agree. What's the difference? I mean, you can't just create this equivalency and say that we're doing one thing. And... What, what equivalency did I create? Well, I'm, 
you're just saying, okay, so one guy from our town funded Hezbollah. That doesn't mean that you, every time we bring up Dearborn, oh, it's a Muslim ghetto, or they're funding Hezbollah. Or yes. So why don't, you, why don't you portray us fairly? Why do you have to call us a terrorist costume and, oh, they're funding Hezbollah? Do, don't you see how... Okay, so first off, first point, I think I've answered your question. Okay. It's funny. Uh, second, uh, second part about the uh, what, tranny punching in about funding Hezbollah. I talked about a specific restaurant that was caught funding Hezbollah. One guy. Is this is this a correct story or not? Yeah, it is a correct story. How many hijackers like came through Dearborn, Michigan? Excuse me. How many hijackers came through Dearborn, Michigan? I have no idea. I don't know. Take a wild guess. And you mean the 9/11 hijackers? Yeah, 9/11. Let's go with that for starters. I mean, maybe they have a cut. Right. Now, of course, not everyone in De just like not everyone in Dearborn supports your view. Of course, not everyone in Dearborn is a terrorist, right? Yeah. And I don't think that you're dressed like a terrorist to be clear. Just like I was talking about Owen Benjamin, he's dressed like Liberace. He's not a gay pianist, right? All right. This part of this is meant to be a comedy show. Now, as far as how it I relates to Islam versus Christianity, like that question, okay. uh, I think there is a shocking statistic, uh, a shocking number of people who support things that aren't in line with. Western values, and that's okay. okay. People, I mean, can you name me a single Islamic country where there's freedom of speech like we have in the United States? One. Well, that's kind of a Western value, though. You, right. You can't expect us to have that. I, I'm not good. I'm not good. saying it's bad. I'm good. Saying it's bad. I'm not saying it's bad, but different. So you support freedom of speech. Values. They have. So you support freedom of speech, though. I do. In this, country, I do support freedom of speech, but I can't tell someone in my home country to support it or not support it because they have their own way of. No, life. you can't tell them what to do. Okay. I can say they're wrong. So can you appreciate that people have different ways of living? Sure, I can. This is a big thing too, by the way. Thank you. What was your name, sir? Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali. Is that actually your is Muhammad Ali? Is that really your name? Yeah, that's okay. Muhammad Ali. Thank you for your question, Muhammad Ali. Uh, I appreciate it. Let's hear from Muhammad Ali. Thank you. Um, this is crazy to me when people say, like, why can't you appreciate different worldviews? I can. I appreciate different worldviews. That's why. Uh, let me let me hold on a second. But listen, the guy was bold enough to answer to ask a question. And I appreciate. It. Let's not shut him down. Okay. Let's not do the mob rule Thank here. You. All right? I appreciate different points of view. I explore different points of view. That's why I'm free to say I don't like the crappy ones. And I'm sorry, but if your country doesn't believe in freedom of speech, and you said it, not me, it's a Western value, guess what? I'm going with the Western values country. That, that, if there's a country, that's OK, that's enough. Your question's done. If there's a country that says, all right, a woman needs X amount of witnesses to prove a rape, and right here we're putting Kavanaugh on trial because Christy Ford said something might have happened sometime, some space of, I have no idea whether, where, when, how, who, and the people who she said who said, I wasn't there. That's completely full of crap. If we're going to bitch about that, but then talk about countries where people get off with rape completely scot-free, I go, I'm with the Western values country. If we have countries, if there are countries where there's death for apostasy, I don't care whether it's Islam, whether it's Christianity, or they're burning churches in record numbers, and there are people saying, hey, you know what, I think that's wrong, I'm with the Western values country. If there's, a con if there's a place out there where people say that you should actually be killed for converting or you should be subjected to some kind of dimitude or a poll tax if you don't fall in line with some kind of religion, or if there are entire administrations, systems of government that rely on subjugation, conversion, or death, I'm with the country that doesn't do that. And here's the thing. It doesn't mean I hate those people. It doesn't mean I hate all of the people in those countries, but guess what? If it comes into some kind of a global conflict where the country that says yes, free speech, yes, women's rights, yes, freedom of religion, yes, a democratic republic, and the countries that say none of that, all right, surf's up, we're dropping some bombs. I'm fine with that. If, if the values that I'm talking about right now aren't worth fighting for, then nothing is. It doesn't mean that I hate people. It just means I think they're wrong. And that's one thing the left constantly tells us. Well, you have to think someone's right to appreciate it. No. What's that? I'm not a big fan of Saudi Arabia. That's a pretty generalized question to shout. What is, uh, Saudi Arabia? <laughs> Your move, Canadian. Um, <laughs> And I want to close with this. You're good. You're done. Thank you. Freedom of speech, let's, we'll kind of understand it a little better. We can talk about it after the show. Doesn't mean you get to keep asking questions. Uh, other people have lined up. I appreciate the questions. We do have to get going. One thing I wanted to go back to was where we talked about earlier this idea of fear, of whether you should speak out uh, in your class with your professors. And here's something that's pretty, pretty remarkable. That person said they were afraid. I understand it. And we just had someone say, yeah, but those are Western values, freedom of speech. How can you say that they're right? One person's afraid of saying Western values are right, I support freedom of speech, 
And one person's not afraid to say, how do you know that those values are right? Both live in this country. Why do we make trans jokes? Why do we make jokes about Islam? Why do we tell jokes that sometimes are on the edge where sometimes we write it, we look in the pitch meeting, and Owen Nimmer and I go, man, this really shouldn't make air, and we say, but we kind of have to do it. It's because when people tell you what you can't talk about, what you can't make fun of, you know that you have to do it because somebody has to do it. And here's something else I want to talk with you about. You know, Jordan Peterson talks about telling the truth a lot, or at least not lying. And I've talked about this a lot too, telling the truth, particularly not lying to yourself. Why? Because the lies you tell yourself will eat away at your soul for the rest of your life. You cannot look yourself in the mirror, lie to yourself, and have respect for yourself as a human being, and you can't, you can't even hope to change hearts or minds. But there's something else that's really important with truth. And to the man, I think it was uh, Evan who asked with his cape. Um, and this happened recently. I was actually uh, visiting northern Michigan on a long weekend. And um, there's a lady, a friend of our family, her husband died. And uh, we said, listen, how are you doing? And you know what she said? You know what? It's been really hard. It's been really hard. The furnace went out, and I just kind of feel like I can't handle one more thing. Um, and we said, listen, you know what? You, I know you feel that way. I can't imagine what you're going through. I can only try to imagine, but you probably can. You probably can't handle one more thing. And she said, wow, thanks. That was just, that's what I needed to hear. It sounds silly. There was someone else who uh, had just recently gotten married. Um, we love this per person. She's a server, and she's always, very, she's always very nice, very friendly. We said, hey, how's it going? We just got married. And she said, you know what, honestly? It's kind of been tough. It's been a tough first year. And you know what I said? My wife and I said, the first year of marriage is always the toughest. And I've written about that. I've written about abstinence until marriage. I know. People are like, well, you just did the trendy name Sue joke. Yeah, I was absent until I was married, so still kind of a traditionalist Christian here. Um, <laughs> And we're always taught this idea that there's this honeymoon phase where marriage is easy the first year. No. Again, if you understand that you're flawed, two very flawed, imperfect people joining in unity, the first year is hard. And I said this to this woman, and so did my wife. I said, yeah, listen, it gets easier. See a counselor. It helps. You're two people who've lived very different lives, and now you're joining them. Of course. You have, for you have a certain way you do the dishes, let alone how you make your bed, let alone how you view the world. People are going to see it differently. Marriage is hard the first year. And she said, you know what? You're the first people who said that. Now, we didn't say, let us teach you about marriage. I didn't do the Steven Seagal thing. The, ah, I've been married four times. And all my wives say, you're amazing. You know, it's not like, it's like Steven Seagal, didn't you poop your pants once on? That's a lie. Um, we just said, marriage is really hard. We fought like cats and dogs the first year. And it helped her. We just said, listen, I know, listen, I, we, we, I know it's really hard, it's really hard, marriage is hard, it's hard when you lose a spouse. Sometimes just speaking the truth, it's not about how it helps yourself. It's about everyone around you. That's the huge thing. When we talk about right or wrong, left or right, black or white, Indian or Indian, right? There's one thing, there's one through line, and I hope you get this in the show. And obviously we do satire and sometimes we go a little bit too far. There's one through line that matters above all else, and it's truth. It is truth, and it's not only because truth we've heard about, the truth will set you free. So often people hear this when we talk about truth, and they talk about speaking truth to power, and they're talking about themselves. They're talking about, well, I need to be truthful because that's better for me in the long run because no one's that good of a liar, right? We hear that all the time. You better tell the truth because no one's that good of a liar. But how often do we hear people talk about how you telling the truth, and not your truth, but living the truth and telling the truth helps everybody around you. And if you, wanna, if you wanna know why that is, you doubt that for a second, and you talk about how you're afraid to speak out in class, you talk about how you're maybe afraid to speak out in the entertainment industry, well guess what, there are a lot of other people out there like you who aren't necessarily telling the truth because they're afraid. And wouldn't it be great if every time you walked into a room, whether it's a classroom, whether it's a business meeting, you were actually aware of the fact that that sampling represented the general populace, and it was like the roar that you hear here. Because the truth doesn't just set you free, it helps every single person around you. And right now, today in 2018, it is not something that I recommend. It is absolutely your civic duty to speak the truth as often and as loudly as you can so that everyone else can hear you. Thank you so much, U of M. I hear you. I love you. I am so appreciative and humbled. God bless you. God bless the United States of America. Thank you so much.